This is a reading from the Notebooks by Mary Torta, 1944, November the 3rd. Footnote says, This entry is preceded by the episode involving the healing of Simon Peter's mother-in-law, found in the cycle on the first year of the public life. Jesus then says to me, and for me, The greeting you like so much, my greeting, peace be with you, should be used by you as the only greeting for everyone. Even if it were my vicar, you should greet him as I greeted and taught others to greet. Isn't peace God himself? Isn't peace, which we recognize to be the loveliest of things, to praise God by praising it? Say then, peace be with you. Don't say lei or voi, but te. We have kept the Italian pronouns used in the original untranslatable into current English because the meaning is that the pronouns conveying respect and formality in the mode of addressing someone, lei and voi, are to be avoided in favor of the one conveying proximity and intimacy, te. And if you should happen to enter a house, say, peace be in this house, there is no greeting which is broader, sweeter, holier, or more mindful of me than this one. Goodbye. Peace be with you. On November the 9th, the footnote says, This entry is preceded by the following episodes found in the first year of the public life. November 4th, Jesus preaches and works miracles in Peter's house. November 5th, Jesus prays at night. November 6th, apparently corrected on the 8th, the leper healed at Chorazin. <clears throat> A tall, beautiful, imposing, luminous figure, cheerful with heavenly rejoicing, and a full voice with a gentle accent. In, it, in its tone, it reminds me of the loving velvet of Mary Magdalene, and in its accent, the clearest Tuscan style of speech. She says, Sister, I too have come. Write down my words. They will bring you joy and great peace. And she waits for me to take up the notebook and write this. She now speaks again. I am Catherine, St. Catherine of Siena, 1347 to 1380 doctor of the church. You love me, and do not love me, for you are like me, and yet you are frightened by my strength. Sweet sister, what are you frightened by? Don't you know that my strength is the same as the strength in you, that of the gentle lamb that bled to death? Oh, all his blood is in those who love him, and by this blood, which is fire, we can act in the world, and in heaven we rejoice. Can those who have that blood with them fail to be strength and fire? And don't you know that this blood is the juice of God and po possesses along with it what God's essence is? Perfect charity? Rejoice, sister. It is fitting that you too, as a lamb and a falcon, should have had your tool dough. Uh, dough, um, the name of the young man condemned to death who was accompanied by St. Catherine and died in holiness. It is fitting. You snatched away a greater prey with your loving face than I did on the scaffold. That one had committed a bloody crime, yours a satanic and spiritual crime. You led him to the same pasture, sweet lamb of my shepherd, my shepherd, to the pasture, a pasture of the three divine virtues and the infinite truths. You have given blood and fire. You will have blood and fire her as a robe and diadem. Sister, goodbye. Peace, that is, the sweet lamb that bled to death be with you always. On the same date, the episode was written involving the paralytic healed at the Peter's house in Capernaum, founded in the third year of the public life. And then on November 10th, this entry is preceded by the episode involving the miraculous catch of fish found in the first year of the public life. Today, the first thing I had was the letter, which if I had had writ to write on, on my own, would have been much sharper. Then, St. Catherine of Siena spoke for the first time. The dictation by St. Catherine may have been erroneously attributed to the preceding day. Then the two visions, and Jesus, on giving the second one, says, Write today. Tomorrow your physical condition will be such as to impede all action. Indeed, since yesterday I have been suffering so much that I have fallen ill even more than usual. People are sometimes as cruel as assassins. May God be merciful to them. 
I am happy that Giuseppe is leaving with the viaticum of the words in the letter which has been added here. No letter has been added to the notebook. And in the dictation by St. Catherine. He wept like a child, especially when Jesus had me give my cousin my medal as a daughter of Mary, which was very dear to me, also because it was a memento of my school. The inscription reads, Mother, look upon us and protect us. So be it. Those who feel I am too attached to things because I suffer over certain matters which seem like profanation to me would perhaps change their minds if they saw how, without arguing, but rather with a joyful, quick will, I detached that medal and another and still another from the rosary, all three of them of Our Lady, and all three very dear to me, not because of their value as silver, but because of affection and memories, and I gave one to Paola, to whom at her request I had already given a crucifix I was very fond of, which my dead father and mother had held in their hands, a little crucifix which was on this rosary, which will also be in my hands at my death, another one to Titina, and finally this one, the dearest of all to me, to Giuseppe. Mm. Giuseppe Belfanti, the cousin of the writer's mother, Anna nicktain, nicknamed Titina, was his second wife, and Paola was his daughter and Titina's stepdaughter. Indeed, I gave this one first, because the order had come for him. I gave them to the others so as not to create desires and regrets. And then, if only Our Lady would save them all, I made a final attempt with her dictations on her infancy and childhood, and I won. I have now finished my diuturnal mission. He is going far away, and Satan is so wicked. He is found everywhere, and men are his instruments to torture their fellows, even those who would be least considered to be such. He is going far away. May Our Lady save him. Jesus, when saying to me, Give your medal to Giuseppe, the daughter of Mary one, finished with a smile. And the one on her knees, say Agnes, in front of the mother, is you, in relation to your cousin. Yes, I shall pray for him, whom Catherine calls your Tuldo. See November 9th so that he will take pleasure in the pastor of the three virtues. 3 p.m. the same day. Here I am, alone. They have left, they being the Belfanti relatives. There is no longer any blood relation close to me, but only those unrelated, more or less good. And when I die, the unrelated. And when I am buried, the unrelated. Always and only the unrelated. The full tragedy of my condition looms before me without veils of charity or affection to obscure the angles, which are sharp, sharper than swords. And this is happening to me here, where I don't even have you, uh, Father Migliorini, and my house around me. I, had a, I would have wanted this only from God, for this departure to take place when I was in my house and with you near. And since I felt this was right, I thought it would be granted to me. Paola, Giuseppe, Titina. I have sometimes suffered because of you, but how I shall miss you. I am really an orphan now, and with the certainty of no longer seeing those familiar faces that for so many months, fifteen and a half, I have always seen around the house. Now that I am sicker and sicker, who will take care of me while Marta is away? And when I reach the point of agonizing from a crisis, who will come to my aid while Marta goes to get help? Paola, Giuseppe, Titina, and I suffered if you were away from me. From, for an hour. I did not say so, but I suffered. And what ended up making this town hateful for me was that I was confined up here. In Via Reggio, the writer's room was on the th ground floor, whereas in St. Andrea di Compito, her, her room was on the upper floor, and she was thus more isolated. This passage is clear in the light of note 312. And saw you much less, and heard you much less. I was so happy during these last nights when Paola slept with me, it seemed to have gone back to the time when I watched over you, a motherless child, at the Cintralino. Paola Belfanti had lost her mother, Normanna, the first wife of Giuseppe, in 1922, when the writer was in Reggio, Calabria, where from October 1920 to August 1922, she was the guest of the Belfanti relatives, who owned two hotels called the Centrale and the Cintralino. I was so happy during these last nights when Paola slept with me, I seemed to have gone back to the time when I watched over you, a motherless child, at the Cintralino. Now more of this now, 
No more of this now. Never again. I know it had to come. I prayed for it to come because you so desired, but I suffered. My saint's day was marred by this joyful hurry of yours to depart. I did not say so, but how I suffered, Marta knows. I have given you everything, as a relative, as a friend, and as a Christian. I have given you more than material things, which for me are always nothing. I have given you my heart and my spirit. Now I can say so. I have defended you by dint of penances, in your illnesses, dangers, and trips. Paola, Giuseppe, Titina, and you, Gigi. A Luigi Belfanti nicknamed Gigi, Giuseppe's son and Paola's brother. Who don't know how much I have prayed for you. I paid for you. I have brought you to safety and upwards. I shall now continue to pray with my heart, which bleeds from being torn away from you. Love me, even beyond life, which I now hope will be brief, for on earth there is no place for poor Maria, and I hope the gates of heaven will open for me. But if I had had you for that hour, love me as a relative, friend, and Christian, as Christians, friends, and relatives, who knows when you will receive this sheaf with this page of tears. May God grant that you may know together that I am in peace. But when you receive it, you will know a bit more about the way I have seen you and the way I was for you.